hello again and welcome to what is a very soggy, wet, muddy week 13 for our small worm bin weekly update. And as you can see here is Worm Mountain. Now what went wrong with this bin? Last week you'll have heard me mention that I thought it was getting far too wet and I would probably have to do something about it sooner or later. Well two factors contributed to this. One is I relied on the drainage holes that were in the bin I didn't add any more drainage holes. And the second factor is the fact that this bin was fed almost exclusively on very high water content scraps. So melon skins, uh, banana skins, apple core, mango and so on. So the content of what was going into this bin had a very uh, was very high in water anyhow and there wasn't enough drainage holes. So if this happens to your bin, what do you do? Well, first thing is, you need to drill more drainage holes. Which I've done here. And now I'm going to cover this with plain cardboard and shred some more cardboard and add that on top. Now you'll come across advice, which is very good advice, that when your worm bin gets too wet you add dry carbon material such as shredded leaves, shredded cardboard, shredded paper and so on. That works up to a certain point but once the bin has got as wet as this bin is it's not going to make the slightest bit of difference whatsoever. So it really is a case of removing as much if not mo as much as possible if not m most actually of the of the very wet material. It's very mud really. So it's a bright sunny day here and I'm using sunlight to drive the worms down off the top of Worm Mountain and as they go down I'm just going to skim off the top and remove the stuff into this bucket. We'll see how much we get at the end. So that's the first half of the bin done. Worms have been added into the shredded cardboard as I found them and most of the very wet material has been removed. And now it's just a case of taking the very wet mud on the other side of the bin, putting it on top of this and doing the same thing. Drill more holes, cover with cardboard and then start picking through the vermicompost, removing most of the wet stuff. So that's that half of the bin ready. Yeah, I did such a good job of guessing the size of the cardboard I'd need at the bottom. It was spot on. I thought I'd show it to you twice. <laughs> no, not really. Just bad editing on this phone on my part. So really it's just a case of rinse and repeat. I'm just going to pick through some of this very wet material, remove it from the bin and put the worms over on the other side. I'm not going to remove all of this wet stuff because it's absolutely full of microorganisms and bacteria and so on that the worms want so I'm going to leave an amount of it in the bin so the bacteria can start colonizing the cardboard and that will help the worms adjust to the new setup in this bin more quickly. <coughs> I've just spotted a worm there so I'm going to remove him. This wet stuff is probably full of very tiny worms but the problem is it's so wet and so dense you can't actually see them. They're as thin as a thread when they just hatch. So as this dries out slowly um, they'll start to become more visible and I can remove them. So that's the bin and the worms on the other half now.
this is just my inner child coming out but when I see mud I want to make mud balls and start throwing them at things but actually um, there is something I want to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a very small amount of this very wet vermicompost make a small little ball with it set it to one side and then this evening I'm going to bring it in and put it by the cooker when we're cooking dinner and breakfast in the morning so I'm going to dry it out very quickly and you'll see what happens and I think it should be a good demonstration as to why you need to dry out very wet vermicompost slowly and naturally so that's the little ball set aside that will be uh, the star feature of a video which is going to be uploaded as soon as I get this one done you can see really there's nothing to be done with this except spread it out thinly and allow it to dry naturally so that's the bin this is the mother bin all I'm going to do now is just add some of the composted guinea pig bedding which the worms will like and in it there's some potato peeling and carrot peeling so not material with a very high water content in comparison to say they're like the melon skins so that's the bin we'll come back next week and have a look at it and see how the worms have got on and I thought we'd just end by quickly having a look at the bin that we split off from the mother bin so this is like daughter bin one if you like and see how the worms have settled so they've been going now for two weeks I've only added a very very small amount of food just to give them a bit of a mix I'm just going to fluff up the bedding to make sure there's plenty of air getting through it but you can see the worms have settled very well lots of them spread quite well throughout the bin so we'll probably I'm not going to feed it this week I'll probably start feeding it next week from next week I'll start adding food so that's it thank you very much for watching um, as always if you have any questions please ask and I'll do my best to answer them for you any comments drop them down below please like share and if you haven't already done so please subscribe that's it for now thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week with another update